This is Bible Readings number 17. And the title of this message is How to Build Sound Believing Churches. Sound Believing Churches. Sound Believing Churches. Dr. Hoyt Chastain told me, and all the, all the boys at CMBI, California Missionary Baptist Institute, so many years ago, in the early, late 1960s and early 1970s. He said, how you build sound churches is preach, 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 preach the word. Preach the word, preach the word, preach the word. And I went into a little old church that had nine members and began to pastor it and it had over 300. But they were absolutely immersed in the word of God. I poured it up. Now, tonight, this is Christmas Eve, and we talk about Christmas and we talk about the, the birth of Christ. And that is the most important thing in the history of the whole world. We have a letter here by the Apostle Paul to Titus. Titus means a title or uh, important person, a title person, one that has titles. He was probably a Gentile from Antioch, according to Galatians 2 and 3. He was brought to Christ by Paul the Apostle, Titus 1 and 4. And this happened about 14 years after Paul's conversion, around A.D. 66 or A.D. 67. They were still having problems with the, with the Jewish Christians. The Jewish Christians just want, felt like they were married to the law. And they didn't want to lay it down at all. The Jews uh, opposed Christianity tenaciously. And even the believing Jews, so-called, opposed the Gentile Christians because of arrogance. Paul in the book of Galatians said that he stood face to face against Peter because Peter was just too married to the law. Now there are two Gospels by the way. There's not Peter's Gospel and Paul's Gospel as Mr. Bullinger said. But there's only one Gospel and that's in 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter now, Paul tells Titus how to build sound believing churches. Sound believing churches. What I mean by believing, it means that they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he is the only way of salvation. That you cannot get to heaven by working for it. You don't get saved a little bit and then keep it a lot. It's one or the other. Either salvation is by grace or salvation is by works, Paul said, and it's not by, it's not by works. If it was by works, then God would have never sent it forth his Son. Galatians 4 and 4. In the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, that he might redeem us, that we're under the curse of the law. This starts out here in Titus, Paul, that I taught, Paul, a bond servant, a servant, a slave of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, the faith of those chosen of God, and the knowledge of the truth, which is according to his godliness. Truth according to godliness. Apostle of God, Paul was taught by Jesus alone, face to face for three years in Arabia. He said that in the book of Galatians. He said uh, the apostle of Jesus Christ for the faith, the faith believing, for the believers of those chosen of God, picked out the elect of God and of the knowledge of the truth according to godliness in the hope of eternal life which God, who cannot lie, God, who cannot lie, promised long ages ago 
even to Adam in the garden in Genesis 3.15. But at the proper time manifested even his word in the proclamation with which I was entrusted according to the commandment of God our Savior. Now our Savior Jesus Christ is God. This one verse here ought to put the Jehovah's Witnesses to shame. Right there. But they will try to get around it. To Titus, my true child in the faith, in a common faith, grace and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus, our Savior. For the reason I left you in Crete, that you might set in order what remains and appoint elders. Elders in church are deacons and pastors. The elders in the church are deacons and pastors. In every city, as I directed you, in every city, they would have a church. And the church has a pastor, it has church members, and it has deacons, those that are ordained ministers that serve the church. Verse number six. Namely, if any man be above reproach, the husband of one wife, having uh, children who believe and not accused of dissipation and rebellion. For the overseer must be above reproach as God's steward, not self-willed, not, not quick-tempered, not addicted to wine, not pugnacious, nor fond of sordid gain. This really lays out some examples, doesn't it? For a pastor. Overseer is a bishop. That means uh, someone that watches over a flock. But hospitable, loving what is good, sensible, just, devout, and self-controlled. Holding fast the faithful word. Preach the word. Preach, preach, preach the word. That's how you build churches. That's how you build sound and believing churches. Fast, holding fast the faithful word which is in accordance with the teaching that he may be able both to exhort in sound doctrine and re to refute those who are contradicting the word of God, the, the Jews wanting to turn back to Judaism. Pagans wanting to go back to paganism. For there are very, very many rebellious men, empty talkers, Deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, in other words, of the Jews, who must be silenced because they are upsetting the whole families, the whole families of churches, teaching things that should not teach for the sake of sordid gain. The Jews did not want to receive Jesus because he'd take their job from them. They'd go on unemployment. They'd be jobless. The priest would be jobless because he is our high priest. The priests did not want to become pastors. They did not want to come, become ministers. They wanted to be leaders and they wanted to be hold the thumb down, hold their thumbs down upon all the populace. One of themselves, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy and glutton. This testimony is true. For this cause, reprove them severely that they may be sound in the faith. The liars, evil beast. This is the paganism. They were having trouble with the Jews and they were having trouble with the pagans. Not paying attention to Jewish myths, again, and commandments of men who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. People can be religious, but if they don't believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, they're lost. And they will lead you away from the truth. Unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their mind and their conscience are defiled. They hate God. Peter, Paul, 
and Stephen. Stephen stood there at Stephen's gate or the sheep gate and said, And you crucified the God of glory. And they stoned him and bit him with their teeth like dogs. They profess to know God, but by their deeds they deny him, being detestable and disobedient and worthless for any good deed. A figwood fellow is what it says. Figwood's not good for much. Figwood fellow. A worthless fellow. Verse in chapter number 2, verse number 1. But as for you, speak the things which are fitting for sound doctrine. Doctrine is very important. I hear so many people in our church doesn't teach doctrine. Well, what do they do? What do they do? You can't even sing a gospel song and not teach God doctrine. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. How do you know that Jesus loves me? Because the doctrine, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoso believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Older men are to be temperate and dignified and sensible and sound in faith and in love and perseverance. Older women likewise are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, nor enslaved to much wine and teaching what is good. All of it says, now, it doesn't tell them not to drink wine, does it? It says, don't become drunkards. Don't become drunkards. Don't stay in the wine. Till you fall over or fall in the cup. That they may encourage the young women to love their husbands and to love their children. Love their husbands and love their children. So many women want to love somebody else's husband or some someone else instead of their own husband. Some women have children just to use them. Some women will have children just to uh, attach themselves to their husbands so they feel like they can't get away. Be sensible and pure and workers at home and kind and being subject to their own husbands that the word of God may not be dishonored. Likewise, urge the younger men to be sensible in all things show yourself to be an example of good deeds with purity and doctrine and dignified Sound in speech, which is beyond reproach. Sound in speech. What in the world does that mean? When they speak, speak sound doctrine. When they speak, don't speak obscenities and gutter language of the world. Beyond reproach, in order that the, the opponent may be put to shame, having nothing bad to say about us. Now, the world hates us anyway. Jesus said, if the world hates you, it hated me first. But don't give it a reason to hate you. Urge bond slaves to be subject to their own master. In other words, urge slaves to be subject to their own masters and everything. To be well-pleasing, not argumentative. Not a thief, not pilfering, uh, but showing all good faith that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in every respect. Now, people, we are slaves to whoever we work to in all reality. Back then, they bought and paid for you. Now, your job, that you, whatever you work, the, uh, the business owner owns you as a, you can leave, but they own you because they pay for your labor. We're somewhat indentured servants to some extent. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all mankind, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly righteously and godly in the present age, in this present age, and boy, I'm telling you what, this, this place was bad. These were some bad people here. These were ungodly buzzards. And he said, don't act like them, come out of that and stay away from it. 
looking for the blessing, hope, and the appearing of our glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from the lawless deeds and purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds, zealous to, to live godly lives and, and, and good lives full of good deeds. You should not be known as a neighborhood crook. You shouldn't be known as a, a deceitful person. You should be full of truth and full of godliness and full of hospitality, it says. These things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. Preach the word is what he said. Preach the word. Preach the word. How do you build sound churches? Preach the word. The last chapter now, number three. Remind them to be subject to the rulers and authorities, to be obedient and to be ready for every good deed. Be equipped for every good deed. Uh, equipped, trained for every good deed. To malign no one, to be uncontentious, gentle, showing every consideration for all men, for we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient and deceived and enslaved to the various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy and hate, hateful and hating one another. Sounds like the world, doesn't it? But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, for when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, that He might redeem us that were under the curse of the law. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to His mercy according to His grace, by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. And how do you get that? By the preaching of the Word. Preach the Word. Preach the Word. That's how you build sound and believing churches. Whom He poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we might be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is the trustworthy statement, and concerning these things, I want you to speak confidently so that those who have believed God may be careful to engage in good deeds. These things are good and profitable for men. Remember, this whole area in here was known for lawlessness and wicked, hard-hearted men. And some of these got saved. They were thieves and liars and charlatans. But shun foolish controversies and genealogies and strife and disputes about the law, for they are imp improfitable and worthless. Jews again. Verse number 10. Reject a, a factitious man after the first and second warning, knowing that such a man is perverted and it is sinning and, and being self-condemned. Reject a factitious man. A factitious man. A man that is you can't con deal with, you can't control him, you can't tell him, you can't lead him in truth. Verse number 12 now. When I send Artemis, or Tychius, to you, make every effort to come to me at Nicopolis. Nicopolis means a conquering city. For I have decided to spend the winter there. And diligently help Zenos, the lawyer, and Apollos on their way, so that they, have n they won't lack anything. Food, clothing, money. Let our people also learn 
to engage in good deeds, to meet pressing needs, that they may not be unfruitful. If you don't give to God's service, you are unfruitful. As simple as that. If you don't give to God's service and His service, you are unfruitful. Paul told Titus and these churches here, learn to be, they teach them to be believing, sound, giving churches. All who are with me greet you. Greet those who love us in the faith. How do you love somebody in the faith? When they believe what you believe, you have a lot in common. Grace be with you all. Grace be with you all. The grace of giving, the grace of believing, the grace, grace of teaching, all of these things are very important. How to build sound churches and believing churches, preach the word. Preach the word. This absolutely saturate the church with the word and people will bring people in. They will go out, they'll be so excited about learning something in God's word, they won't share it. And the word of God will wash their lives and clean their lives, clean their minds, clean their consciences. Preach the word and build sound churches. That's how you build churches. Preach, preach, preach. Our Father, we thank you for your word. Please use it wherever it goes to touch hearts, to teach people to be givers and lovers of other men. And Father, thank you for all the blessings you give us. Thank you for what you've given us here in this little assembly. Help us to grow and love you more. In Jesus' name we pray, and please forgive me where I failed you.